Android Auto is a common feature in most vehicles nowadays. The main drawback is that most instances rely on a wired connection, requiring your phone to be plugged in for the entire duration of your drive. Well, there are solutions available in the market, for example, dongles that convert your wired Android Auto into wireless ones. But they are pretty expensive here in India, with the cheapest option costing somewhere around 6,000 rupees. Um, I actually came across this post on Team BHP, which I'm going to link down in the description for your reference, that had a tutorial in terms of converting a wired Android Auto to a wireless one um, that inspired me and I thought to give it a shot. And I want to, to take you along in this journey of converting the wired Android Auto on my car to a wireless one and also to let you know whether that works or it does not. So stay tuned, guys. the Raspberry Pi Zero W. It's a super useful single board computer or SBC that will serve as our dongle hardware. Um, this one costed me around uh, 1240 rupees on Silver Line Electronics, uh, link down in the description. A micro SD card. I had a 32 gigabyte variant lying around unused. You might need to spend around 400 rupees if you are buying it new. A micro USB cable. I had one from an old power bank and it will cost approximately 100 rupees if bought new. Wireless Android Auto dongle image file for the Raspberry Pi. This software image will be loaded onto the micro SD card and uh, fed into the Raspberry Pi, enabling it to act as a wireless dongle. There is no cost involved for this one. Rufus. This will help us flash the code onto the micro SD card and make it bootable. It's a free software as well. Heat sink for the Raspberry Pi. This one ensures that the chip on the Pi runs cooler. Not a mandatory accessory, but highly recommended. Bought from Silverline Electronics for just 74 rupees. An optional accessory is the case for the Raspberry Pi. It helps tidy up the entire setup, which uh, visually upgrades the solution and protects it better than a bare bones SBC. Cost somewhere around 300 rupees. I'll put all the links down in the description so that you get hang of all the resources at one place. Hit like if you like this effort. The Team BHP article mentions Balena Etcher as the software to use, but I faced quite a bit of challenges using it, which is why I recommend Rufus. Apply the heatsink on the Raspberry Pi. This step is optional, but highly recommended. Next up, we will insert the micro SD card into the slot. Gently push it in to ensure that it's properly seated. In your car, connect your phone with the wire to launch Android Auto. Once Android Auto connects, remove the phone and plug in the Raspberry Pi, ensuring that the micro SD card is in it. The micro USB should be plugged into the port marked USB. Make sure that you do not plug it into the port marked power in. Wait for a few seconds for the green LED on the Raspberry Pi to glow on the phone. Connect to the Bluetooth device named Android Auto Dongle or AA Wireless Dongle, depending on the software you're using. 
and grant it the permissions it asks for. Open your phone's Wi-Fi settings and connect to the network AA wireless dongle. Use the password connect AA wireless dongle if required and ensure that auto connect is turned on for this particular network. Android Auto should wirelessly connect on your car screen now. Every time you switch on the car, your phone should connect to the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi on the Raspberry Pi, which in turn would connect to Android Auto on your car wirelessly. All of this without you even lifting a finger. Let's talk about the goods and the not so goods about the solution. We will start with the cons or the not so goods. Firstly is the heating. This uh, Pi heats up a little more than what I will personally be comfortable with, even with the heat sink on. Having said that, there are cases available in the market that accommodates an active cooler um, but considering those will definitely increase the overall price of the uh, setup. So if your budget permits, please uh, go ahead and explore that option as well. The second con that I can think of is the amount of time it takes for the Android Auto to start on the head unit once the ignition is switched on. It typically takes about 30 seconds for um, the Android Auto to be operational, which is approximately 10 seconds more than what it uh, takes in uh, the wired mode. In the goods category, the only thing that I can think of is the lack of lag in the overall, um, let's say, UI uh, when compared to the wired mode. Again, having said that, it's not that my head unit was blazing fast when I was using it in wired mode, so really not a great comparison to start with. Well, that's all that I can think of right now. In case I have missed anything or if there is a question that I have not been able to answer in the video, please feel free to drop it down in the comments and I will make sure that I respond to you. Give this video a like if you liked um, the solution. Share this with your friends who drive a car with only wired Android Auto. And in case you do decide to give this DIY solution a try, let me know how that went. This is Shovik signing off. You guys be good, be safe, and make your race. Bye-bye. <laughs>